All right, we have just been listening to testimony by the Secretary of Defense, Leon Panetta, and he talked about Benghazi. And there is no doubt that this has prompted a huge number of questions that these senators are likely to press him on. Let's play a little bit of it for you. Then we're going to talk to Senator Rand Paul. This was pure and simple. In the absence, as I said, of any kind of advance warning, a problem of distance and time. Frankly, even if we were able to get the F-16s or the AC-130s over the target in time, the mission still depends on accurate information about what targets they're supposed to hit. Boy, this raises so many questions. I'm joined now by Republican Senator Rand Paul. He's on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Uh, you know, what I heard from that, and you tell me what your takeaway was, is that the, the U.S. military was not able to, to help out in this situation. Does that, does that make sense to you? Yeah, and I don't doubt that they tried to do everything they could, but he hit the nail on the head, time and distance, which begs the question, who made the decision not to have our AC-130s closer, our F-16s closer? But I think he does make a point that they can't always be there exactly when needed. However, the other command decision that Secretary Clinton made was, why did we put someone into a situation like this without adequate military protection? I never would have had an embassy and still would not have an embassy in Libya unless it were under the complete control of the military like the embassy was in the original days in Baghdad. There's a great deal of similarity between Libya and Baghdad, but there's not much similarity between Paris and Baghdad and Paris and Benghazi. So really, we should be treating Libya as a war zone, and I think the military should be in charge of security in its entirety until the country is stable. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not as if this situation just sort of popped up in an area where there had been no unrest that was very, very far away that we hadn't had an eye on. This is North Africa, an, a very unstable Libyan government with a deposed dictator who had recently uh, been, been killed by people there on the ground. It was September 11th. Uh, you know, we, there are a number of hotspots across this region, and, and I agree with you. I don't, I don't think anyone is second-guessing the military in this. Well, yeah, it, it, it's yeah, a question of planning and preparation and, the, and view of the world, is it not? Absolutely. The person I second guess is not the Defense Department. I second guess Secretary Clinton for not having adequate security, for turning down security, for saying, oh, I get a million cables, I didn't have time to read the cables, asking for more security. Well, I'm not asking that she read every cable from Bulgaria to Estonia, but Libya was one of the five most dangerous places in the world, easily by anybody's calculations, and it was inexcusable for her not to read these requests for security, and then to have her department turn down the requests for security, really that was inexcusable. And I really think there, there has not been enough made of the lapse or lack of security in advance yeah. of the attacks. Not the response after the attacks, because I think that'll always be difficult. But really, in advance of this, it was a huge judgment error not to have more protection for our consulate and our, for our embassy. Still to this day in Tripoli, I think, needs more security. Yeah, I understood. You know, and Leon Panetta I admits that. He says we need to harden our facilities in these areas, which I think would be very shocking to a lot of Americans that in these very volatile areas, they're not hardened facilities. Also, just a lot of, of sort of fuzziness about, about the annex, about what was going on there. He said we didn't have enough intelligence on the ground to inform us about what we were what we were heading into there which also well, I that think kind a lot of, of surprises surprise me by. when you, you have the CIA a block away and you don't have enough intelligence as to what's going on and I still think the one question has been lost in this whole cover-up with this movie being the cause I really think part of the cause may have been that there was a gun running operation going on in Benghazi leaving Libya, going to Turkey, and distributing arms to the uh, rebels. Now, when, when you brought reports. that up, Senator, excuse me for, for piping in, when you brought that up in the hearing with Hillary Clinton, uh, she looked shocked. She said, I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, and, and, you know, we were just talking with uh, Jennifer Griffin, who, who said, you know, perhaps, perhaps the tail end of your question wasn't included that gave it a little more context. Well, the thing is, is that... Um, they, they've interviewed the captain of the ship. A ship from Libya sailed for Turkey a week before the ambassador was killed. It was full of arms, and they interviewed the captain, and he actually specifically talks about the distribution of the arms to Syrian rebels. So it, it sounds to me as if this is a story that's been reported in the London Times, the New York Times, and really I think the administration needs to answer, are they involved with uh, running guns through Turkey to Syria? You've raised the question. Uh, Senator, we'll see if we hear more about it today. Thank you very much, Rand Paul. Senator, good to see you.
Kim. Another.